Today I'm going to show you how we engrave this awesome photo engrave onto Baltic birch using our Thunderbolt laser. Let's jump on over to the computer and get things going. I have a photo selected here of my grandson. So I'm actually just going to drag this into Lightburn and let go of it. And whenever it comes in, you'll see it actually takes up pretty much the whole bed. That's because this is a high resolution photo, um, which is what I prefer to use uh, for engraving these photos. But we need to shrink this down now to make it into a five by seven, because that's what we're going to engrave and cut out on the Thunderbolt. Now, just like Photoshop, there are pretty much a hundred ways to do the same job. So I'm just gonna show you the way that we can take this and turn this into a five by seven photo. First, we're gonna grab the little box tool up here and draw out a rectangle. And I wanna make this actually five by seven. So I'm gonna turn off this padlock up here. You'll notice on the size, we'll turn that off. We're gonna make the height five and the width seven. And now it should be five by seven. We're gonna go ahead and select that padlock, turn it back on. That way it stays locked um, to that same proportion there. Now, if yours does not show inches, you'll notice over here to the right, there's a button. If it says millimeters, just click on it and it will change it to inches. So that's pretty easy. So now that we have the photo here, we want to take this, which is a selected red line right now. We're gonna make it a tool. So now I have the blue tool line and I want to crop this image to fit into this. So click on the image. Now first you got to click your selection tool here. We're going to click on the image. I'm just going to drag this down uh, to where I want to crop it, to where I want to engrave it and uh, just grab the corner and start pulling it. So you get it right where you want it. We're going to pretty much engrave most of this. It's sized pretty much the way that I need it now, but we're just going to crop it like this first so you can see how to do it. So now that you have the uh, photo inside your 5x7 line, go ahead and select everything by uh, clicking and dragging over all of it. Right click and tell it to apply mask to image. And you'll see it actually masks that out. Um, if we zoom in here, you can see extended out to the red line is where the photo was. So it masks the image but we're not finished there. We want to right click on it and tell it to flatten image mask. And now it is constrained just to that five by seven size. So now this is kind of what we're going to engrave, but we also want to go ahead and have us a cut line. That way it will cut the five by seven out. So I'm gonna grab my box again here and we will drag out another five by seven. Go ahead and change your size here. Once we have that five by seven, I'm gonna click on red. I'm gonna make this into a cut line. Now let me show you, there are a couple ways that you can center something up. But if you have your selection tool, you click on say your um, cut line here, a shortcut is hit the letter P on your keyboard and it moves it to the center the same way with the photo. Click on it, select it, hit P, and then you have them both centered. Now that we have an image to engrave and a cut line, let's work on the processing part. Click on your image and right click and tell it to adjust image. Now here's where you can do some different changes. I'm gonna tell you what I like to use and uh, then you can play around with your settings to see what works best for you. Um, this is for our Thunderbolt here. So if you're doing something different, you will need to play around with those settings. I have a preset that I already have built here that says photos. So I'm gonna click on the presets and click on photos and it changed it to what works for us. Now we'll take a look at that even a little bit better. The image mode, it changes to Stucky. Now here, the line interval, we use 0 0.052. That gives us a pretty high enough uh, DPI for photo engraves. This could go even higher, but this seems to work very good for us. So the 0 0.052 line interval gives us 488.5 DPI. So that's plenty for us. The contrast is on five, brightness at zero, gamma we have 0.4, and then the enhance radius is on four, enhance amount to 50. And then if you come up with settings that works for you, you can actually save a preset, which is what I did here to just save us a photos preset. Once you have this done, go ahead and click okay. And you'll see your image does lighten up 
and it changes to that dither mode for Stucky. So that's what we're going to be using for this. Now, as far as our settings, let me show you what we use for settings for photos. If we take a look at our settings and our cut settings here, you will see for this image here, these are the settings that works for us. We have a speed of 250 millimeters per second. Our max and minimum power is both set to 27.5 and we do have the air on for this. Our line interval is 0.052, 488 DPI. And then we have the image mode on Stucky. Um, we actually don't change anything with this override frequency. Um, it just works as it is for us. So now we're going to hit and click OK. And then for the rectangle, the actual 5 by 7 rectangle to cut out, I'm going to show you the settings for that. We have found what works for us is a speed of 15 millimeters per second, 85% power on the max, and we have three for the minimum power. We have air on as well for this. One pass is enough to cut this birch that we're using. This is one eighth of an inch birch that we're actually going to be engraving the photos on. That just, the birch seems to work best for us. And that's really all there is to setting up this image ready for engraving. So now we're gonna go ahead and send this to the laser. Click on laser here. We will decide where we want our origin. So we're going to select user origin and I'm gonna select the top left. Um, that's where I prefer to use most of the time. So we have the top left selected there. Now we just need to send this. So we're gonna click on send. And now we wanna give this a name. Uh, we'll leave this here as Colton and I'm gonna click okay. And it is sending this um, a photo. So there's quite a bit of information here. So it does take just a little bit to send this whenever you have a high resolution photo like this. So it is sending to the bolt now. The one thing I like about the bolt, it does beep letting you know that the information has been sent. So now all of that's on the laser. So now let's skip on over to the laser. So here in the laser, we have our piece of birch and I like using these little clips right here just to hold it down like on the corners. That way this makes sure and stays flat for the whole engraving. By the way, I picked these clips up off of Etsy. I will leave you a link to the ones that I prefer and I like. These just seem to work best for me. So if we look here on the controller, you will see that I have the file there uh, for Colton um, that is loaded in there in the controller. But we need to autofocus on this piece of birch first. So I'm going to use the controls here to drive the laser head. And I will just drive this kind of somewhere over here where I'm going to be engraving. And once it is there, I'm going to go back up here and hit the autofocus. And it will tell you that this is going to be performed. So I go ahead and click OK. And you'll see how the laser bed automatically moves and the little autofocus will sense right where it needs to be. Once it is focused, it moves back in the position where it was. Now I'm going to use the same controls here and I'm going to move the laser head into a position where I want to start. As I told you, I set that origin at the top left. So when I have that there, there's a button up here that says origin. You just want to tap on origin and you have an origin set now. So the next thing you can do is press frame. You can make sure that it's going to engrave and cut out right where you want it. And that framed just where we want it, no problem. Now we just need to close the lid on this machine and then press start. You're currently watching this engrave at the real time speed. So this is engraving right now at 250 millimeters per second. I'm fixing to speed this footage up though.
So this has just finished at 30 minutes and 56 seconds to engrave and cut this out. And all we have to do is pull this out now and we have our five by seven engraving. So now that we pull this off of the laser, I think it looks amazing. Now I will tell you to finish this up, I have a little sanding block, a hand sanding block with some fine grit sandpaper that I lightly sanded over this and then took an air compressor and just blew it off. That would get all the dust off, but I think it makes the highlights really pop on these photos like this. So that just works best for us for these settings. The detail that you get from a Thunderbolt is amazing. As you can see, if you use a high resolution photo, you're going to get some excellent results engraving a photo. And it's pretty easy to do. You can pretty much do everything you need to in Lightburn. If you thought this video was helpful, we have another video showing how we took these little ordinary bolts and turned these into some major profit around Father's Day. We've done that on our Thunder Fiber Laser, so be sure and check that video out. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And until next time, God bless.